What's going on guys, this is John Zakari, and today I want to talk about Nintendo's upcoming paid internet service that is going to accompany the Nintendo Switch. Given Nintendo's track record with online services, this came as a surprise to many people, so I'd like to talk about what they can do to justify this service. First off, the big question yet to be answered is price, right? I mean, this could be 20 bucks a year, it could be 60 bucks a year, more in line with the competition, and anywhere else really. And that number will play a big role in determining what Nintendo needs to offer to the consumer. For now, I'm going to leave that on the back burner, probably come back to it at the end. For now, let's get into what we do know. Nintendo released a statement shortly after the Nintendo Switch presentation, explaining that players will be getting a free NES or Super Nintendo game every month to quote play for free for that month. I use that quote because, as I feared in my initial reaction video to the Switch presentation, that game will be in fact taken away from you at the end of the month. Oh, Nintendo, what, what were you thinking with that one? Now, this isn't all bad, however. Again, we don't know that price. So if it is on the lower end, this may just be a nice little bonus being able to play these free games for a while. Also, featuring one title at a time is smart for driving that online play. Let's be honest, just releasing these 20 plus year old games into the wild with new online features would probably result in some frustration with players trying to find other people to play with, especially after the game has been out for a while. However, with the one featured free title, you're going to be driving everyone in your service to that single game, meaning it's likely to have a ton of players at least during that month. So in that way, it makes sense. Still, not allowing you to keep the game after that month is over seems a little bit greedy. This and the other, I guess, premium services I'll call them, like online lobbies and voice chat, won't be available until fall. And from what I've read, the online service free trial will be active until the fall as well. At first, yes, this makes sense to have online play essentially free until fall as yet if you don't have those premium services yet, there's no point in paying for them. But my question here is, what will be the overlap, if any? People can correct me if I'm wrong, but again, from what I've read, the service is free until the fall and the premium services launch in the fall. But if I'm looking to try something in your quote trial, the things I wanna try out are those services that I'm actually going to be paying for. So they better not be flipping those services on at the same time they turn the trial off. Also, I'd like to mention here my problem with the fall launch of the online services. Let me bring up that release image from my last video. I can already hear the keystrokes. These aren't all the games that are gonna be released. Well, if you want me to talk about the other games then get them announced already. Until then, this is what we got. Now there's a bunch of games here that will surely have online play, but realistically, there's two big ones that are Nintendo specific, and they're Mario Kart 8 and Splatoon 2. These are the titles that are going to sell people on the idea that they wanna play not just online, but specifically on Nintendo's network. Mario Kart Deluxe is slated for an April 28th release, and Splatoon 2 is coming out sometime in the summer. Fall comes a bit of a ways after both of those releases. Now, Nintendo's site does say a limited version of this app will launch in the summer, but that's pretty vague so I can't assume what features will be available. I can only hope that Nintendo offers a quality experience for these two titles right out of the gate, as these are the experiences that are gonna make people decide if they wanna pony up for that main service in the fall. And let me move on to the whole app thing. We haven't seen any of this app yet, at least I haven't personally, but as I've stated before, I don't like the idea of needing my phone to play online specifically while the system is docked. On the go is a totally different story. But as I've said previously, if my Xbox, my original Xbox from 2001, 
can do online play all by its little self, I expect my 2017 system to be able to do the same. But if we do need our phones to play online, docked or not, this app better be pretty damn streamlined. I don't want to be going through a bunch of menus, dealing with syncing my phone, ridiculous ads, uh, and other various hoops just to play Mario Kart with a buddy. Now, I don't know if you've all seen this, but there was a video that went in detail about the Switch's Parental Controls app. It has all these bits with Bowser and Bowser Jr. It's, it's pretty solid, actually. But if we can get this high-quality tutorial of the parental controls with all these character animations, can't I get anything, and I mean even a screenshot of what the online lobby deal is going to look like, for instance? With so little information known, this could go either way. I'm just a bit concerned with the potential of this service all revolving around the use of this phone app, while others do not. I mean, right off the bat, I think of families with you know, perhaps younger children, I'm not saying, you know, five or six, but I mean, think of like, maybe, you know, they got, you know, 12, 13 year olds that want to play online. Maybe they don't want to give the kid their own phone. Does the kid have to borrow mommy and daddy's phone to team up with their friends online? I mean, I feel like it could get a little convoluted, but again, we'll see. Now that I've gone through some of the few things we know and detailed my concerns, let's get back to that big question, price. At this point, both Sony and Microsoft services are about 60 bucks a year. Granted, there's always tons of deals to get that price down. I mean, I see them all the time. I don't think, as it stands, that Nintendo is offering anywhere near what the competition is. There isn't nearly as many games you can play online. The free old school games aren't even in the same league of what you're getting from Microsoft and Sony, especially when you factor in Xbox 360 and PS3 games. I mean, Microsoft especially is just is killing it with all the 360 games with gold being backwards compatible. Not to mention, you don't even keep the Switch games. I think Nintendo could probably get away with offering this at 40 bucks a year, but I think 30 would be much, much smarter. I mean, just from a marketing standpoint, you can say straight up, our online services cost half of the competition. That sounds enticing to any consumer right off the bat. Nintendo could certainly be offering something amazing here, but they haven't proved up to this point that they can, which is a key factor. Both the Wii and the Wii U online offerings were weak, to be kind about it. They can't just come out of nowhere and expect to charge something in the range of the competition. And don't forget, the price can always go up. Sony just raised the price of PS Plus a few months ago, I think it was. Once Nintendo proves it's got a high quality service and builds up a strong library of games to be playable on that service, it can push that price upwards. At launch though, I don't see users jumping on board for anything more than a much cheaper cost. And with that, this video is a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on Nintendo's upcoming paid online service in the comments. What do you think is a fair price, and what do you expect to receive as a consumer for that price? As always, I'm John Zakari, and thanks for watching.